What do you think it really was? What was the strength that helped you just to get through the pandemic? Um, definitely our effective communication skills. Definitely that. As I said before, it's about keeping yourself up to date with accurate um, information because we were at the forefront sharing with our parents and making sure at the beginning as well, seven days a week this was happening because you were being informed if any incidents happened over the weekend. So you had to have everything in place. Again, what we found out, and again, this was through our communication that some families that you thought were maybe doing okay and didn't need as much support through speaking to them, emailing, using our Facebook, sending letters to children. The families were then more keen to phone back and talk to you. We found out people that lost their jobs through the pandemic, families that had separated due to the pandemic, deaths as well. So again, your whole dynamics of the families that you had changed. Making sure our children's well-being was okay as well, because you imagine the children that were here, it was a big change for them didn't have all their friends, they were now in bubbles. So we had to make sure that, they, that we were listening to our children and we, to make sure that they knew they could still have fun, play, laughter, that was still allowed, that was still going to go on. So you had to make sure that the children's wellbeing was in listening to them. Before COVID first started, our front door was full of children's pictures, a few policies and things that parents needed to know. And what I realised when walking through that front door during COVID, it changed. And it was quite gloom because, are you wearing a mask? Is there only one person coming forward? That was that was not the kind of ethos that we promote, especially when you come to our front door. But that changed slowly but surely throughout it. We had a rainbows to represent the NHS. We put up thank you letters from people because, again, the staff and the children organised boxes for, children, for, for patients that were in hospital and couldn't get anybody to, to visit, couldn't get anybody to take in any toiletries that they needed. So, again, the staff and the children organised that and got carloads to go over. So, again, that was a really good way of, of getting the children involved. So, again, our door then changed to, to reflect what this building should be about ensuring that children have laughter, have fun and happiness, and know that they're loved when they come in here. Realising ambition um, was a really good support tool for us as well. 3.5, when things aren't straightforward, 3.4 play. These were really good. We, we, we were able to tap in. What an amazing resource it's there. It was as if they knew it was going to happen. It was great. It was so good that we had that here that we could look into. Well, is there anything else that's still a challenge as you recover from the pandemic? We um, we had to change our settling in policy um, during COVID and post COVID. And again, I think it's remembering that when you have new parents that are starting, remembering to share with them why you're doing these things. Um, because a lot of children or our COVID children, as you would say, that they went, and their parents as well, have they've lost a year or two years of being in nursery. So again, it's been mindful of, of making sure that you're asking them questions. Um, when a lot of the children came back as well, they, they did struggle, some of our children. We, had, we identified three groups of children when they came back. Um, we had one group of children that had been sheltered throughout COVID and they were struggling to reconnect, to make positive attachments and to settle. So again, there we made longer settling in periods. We worked really hard with the children. We did fairy labours with them to see how their wellbeing and their interactions were. Our second group were the ones that came back so eager and excited to explore. So again, we had to make sure that their needs were being met. And again, that's where our outdoor area is, is really good. We got them out because they were just wanting to be involved in everything. So they were involved in creating a magical area outside on a limited budget. But again, our staff are really good at upcycling and they got the children involved to do all of that. We then recognised we had a third group and they were the children that attended throughout. So see the noise, the busyness really affected the children when they came back.
been proudly now have a sense of the room in here that was created by the children and the team. And again, this was recognised by our team throughout COVID that this was needed. And we actually have children that now will say, I think I'd like to go to the sensor room because they recognise themselves, that they're not comfortable in the playroom, that, that there's something that they're that they're maybe not able to articulate, but when you go up to the sensor room and they've relaxed, they're then able to talk it through with the team. So that has been, that's the, again, you could maybe say that was a challenge, but what is it? It was really an opportunity again to get it right for our children. And you're talking to yourself about opportunities, which is great because there's always opportunities to move things forward, isn't there? So where do you see the opportunities now, now that we're moving out of the pandemic, um, to work with other services, with communities and with your families to kind of help support any of those gaps in children's and families' experiences? During COVID, um, we were the eyes and ears for Social Working for Health because they weren't able to do home visits. They were It was mostly telephone calls. So we were actually the only service, education was the only service seeing these children. Again, social workers, it would be through windows and certain things like that. So I would say that our relationship with health and social work, although it was really good, it's even better now because they saw us as a good resource to be able to see what was happening. Yeah. What, what's preschool education about? It's about making the Scottish Government want us to be the best place to grow up in Scotland. They want it for children to have the best place to grow up in. So we need to all work together to ensure that we're all doing this. This is vital. We all need to work together. You can't just be a lone soldier. You have got to. Collegiate working is the way. We know and we understand that recovery does take time and it takes effort. So we're really keen to hear what you would like to see from us, from the Care Inspectorate and indeed from other agencies or other organisations um, to support any gaps in children and families' really experiences. Good. Your practice notes are great. I love the Care Inspectorate practice notes. They are a good support and good for reference and um, they're really good to share with the team. Um, more webinars like today. I think it'd be really good to also talk to our training establishments to say to them what we saw and how where we felt students had struggled. 